Bobby Ross. Welcome back to the third attempt at the accidental second part to our bubble painting tutorial. We've had some technological difficulties between batteries dying, cameras turning off unexpectedly, dogs eating paint brushes and paint canvases. I think we're where we want to be, so hopefully you guys are just as far as I am. I believe I have caught up with my second attempt at the painting to where we left off with the previous video. So theoretically, you just finished adding some teal paint to these curves of colors right in here. Now at this point, you can go back, use any of your colors that you've previously used, and actually add more color, a bit of a splash if you like. If you think one bubble needs a little bit more blue or one needs a little bit more pink, feel free at this point to go back and touch up and bring a little bit more color into those bubbles. Especially if you were using the white paint to sort of soften the colors a little bit, and make it a little bit more pastel-y. This is one of the finished paintings, and these colors in here are a lot lighter. And if you think that yours is a little bit too light, this is a great opportunity to fit a little bit more color into your bubbles. So, once you have finished adding colors, if you have a fair bit to do, feel free to pause the video and keep going. Press play when you're ready. Once you're ready, you're going to take, you know, a small brush. You can take a medium for the larger circles, larger bubbles if you like, and that white paint that you have left over. This is when we're going to be doing the larger highlights of the bubbles. I'm just going to make sure that there isn't too, too much paint on my paintbrush, but enough that it's pretty wet. And then we're going to go... I'll start with this bubble here and do a highlight. And it's okay if you paint a little bit over top of your, your color arc, but you want the white to be lower, more, cent more towards the center. So if the color is up at the top part of the circle, just right below it, that's where you want to put your white highlight. Of course, with the smaller bubbles, you're going to want to do a smaller highlight. You can use the edge of your brush for a thinner line. And then the broad side of the brush, if you want a, a thicker line. And just remember to use that arch, and that'll help bring out the three-dimensional spherical shape of these bubbles. also have a cat right now who is very interested in what we are doing. If you can hear him in the background, that's toothless. He's just right there waiting for treats, I'm pretty sure. All right. Now remember, we can also do a little bit of the lower light. Sorry, on the, the highlight on the lower part of the bubble. You just want to make sure everything's relatively balanced. And it's okay if it's not solid white, if you sort of let the brush drift over the canvas, it'll give you sort of a lighter, more transparent or iridescent feel to that bubble. But if you don't, it's okay because these are your bubbles. You can paint them however, however you like. Now at this point I've got, I think all of them done except for the two big ones. I'm going to take my slightly larger brush, kind of a medium-ish. I'm pretty sure this is the one that my dog chewed because the brushes are, the bristles are two different lengths. So this will be interesting. 
Anyway, with the slightly thicker brush, and you can do this with your narrow brush, I'm just kind of lazy, so I'm going with this one. You're just going to do your bigger circles with those highlights and just sort of let it fade as you go around. Okay, I think I have highlights on all of them. I might highlight that one just a little bit more. Bring it up into the color a little bit. As you can see, my bubbles are not perfect. But that's alright. They're my bubbles. And nobody's perfect. So why should our bubbles be? All right, so now I'm gonna switch back to my skinny brush because we're gonna do a little bit more fine work right now. Um, and I was having some difficulty with the bristles being two different lengths. <laughs> So, that brush didn't work out all that well. So we're still working with the white paint here. We're going to take a little bit of white paint, and now we're going to make sort of a sparkle on your larger bubbles. And this is like when the sun really catches it, and it just ping! I'll show you in this painting. You can see, I don't know where exactly the camera is, the star there, and there. And it just kind of adds a little bit more sparkle to your painting. So we've got our white paint on your paint palette here, and thin brush. I'm, even with the thin brush, I'm still going to try to use the edge. And first, we're just going to make a plus sign. So it doesn't really matter where. Just like that, we're going to make a plus sign. So straight up, straight down. And then side to side. Okay, just basic plus sign. Then we're going to make an X, or like a multiplication sign. So it crosses the center of that plus sign. But we're going to make that a little bit shorter. So it's not quite as long-legged as the plus sign. Remember, try to get it thin. And if you can't, it's okay. And again, this is your painting. So if you don't want to add these, the stars, you don't have to. This is just a suggestion. All right, so we got one, the plus sign, and then the little times. So I'll show you up close. That's what we're looking at. Hopefully you can see that. I can't actually see from here what the camera sees, so I'm just hoping you can see it. bit more white paint and we're going to do the same thing with the other large bubble. So just straight up and down and then side to side so you're making a plus sign. And then after you're done your plus sign we're going to make an X in the center of that plus. And that's just going to add a little bit of sparkle. Now, you'll want to 
clean off the end of that brush. The Clean off your brush. Dry it in your paper towel. And what we're going to do now is actually use the very end of our paintbrush because we just want tiny little dots at this point. So we're going to dip the end of our paintbrush in that white paint and we're just going to make little dots. And the bigger, the, the bigger bubbles we can have maybe two or three dots. And again, you don't have to do this, but it just sort of adds a little bit, maybe one dot in your little bubbles, just sort of adds a little bit of sparkle. So I've got one dot, I'm going to re-dot that one. One dot in the smaller bubbles, two dots in the medium bubbles, and then three dots in the uh, larger bubbles, because I like following patterns like that. You don't have to. You can add as many dots as you like, but don't go totally crazy overboard with them. Now, wipe that little nib off, because you do not want to be getting paint on yourself, so don't forget about that. Now, let's go back to that black paint that we had. So you still should have some left over. This is the final step. So before we start with the black paint, look at your painting and make sure that you're happy with the colors, how much color's coming out, the arches, because this is when you can erase and add stuff and do, do all of that. If there's a high cheese, I have another kitty cat here. Um, you can do whatever you like to fix up your painting and make it feel more complete for you. So me, this is the fourth time I've tried this painting, so I'm not gonna fix anything. But what I am going to do is go back over all those bits, those little white speckles from when I was putting the cup of the white paint and making those white circles. You might remember that there's some splatter on your painting. This is the time that we're going to go and we're going to cover up all of those little speckles with the black paint. Beauty of this. Remember, the wet paint will be a little bit shiny. You'll be able to see it right away, but as it dries, it's going to blend in and you'll never notice that you used to have little speckles. And I'm seeing too that I probably should have done a second coat of black paint before I did this painting, but that's okay. I can hi cheese. I'm pretty sure the kitty cats want some treats. So I'm just going over. Oops. And try to be careful because I just went a little bit excited and accidentally painted over top of one of my bubble circles. So I can also take the white and touch that up if I like. But it's fine enough that I'm not going to worry about it. But this is a perfect opportunity to do that. If you feel you need to touch up any of your circles with white, add colors, this is when you do it. Once I'm more filling in some of the spots. 
spots that didn't quite get enough black paint when I was making the base. I've got some speckles in there. So just look for those little white dots of loose paint that sort of flung out when you were using the cups. And this is when we just hide them a little bit. I'm also going to sort of take the edge off that one highlight a little bit and thin it out a little. Same with that one. And it is the perfect time to do that. So if you're not totally happy with those little curves and everything, this is when you can fix it. All right, I believe that I am done my painting. You may still have some highlights to do, you, or fix-ups to do. You may be already done. You may not want to do any fix-ups. That's totally on you. That is your choice. But for me, I am done. I also just got white paint on the lid to my black paint because I wasn't paying attention to where I put it. So, hopefully that doesn't happen to you. Pay attention when you're doing these things. It is pretty important. Also important, try not to get paint on your clothes. Definitely something I do. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys the finished project, even though the black still has to dry a little bit. So I'm just gonna show you a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see that all right. And I did paint the edges of the, oh, I didn't do a very good job, but I, I think I did it with, no, I didn't do that one particularly well either. Not, anyway, I tried to paint the edges, but again, apparently wasn't paying attention. So this is my final product. When this is completely dry, what I can also do is take a, a lacquer finish, a spray, or if you have Mod Podge, something like that, you can coat it with that and that will seal the paint and the canvas, make it last a little bit longer, and it'll give it a nice sort of sheen to it. And that will actually make your bubbles pop that much more because bubbles are shiny. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me again. I am Bobby Ross, and I hope you had a really fun time making the Bubbles painting. See you again soon.